Hi, I'm Aaron of Living Science Videos. We already talked about how scientific theories and hypotheses must be falsifiable, meaning that they have to be testable to show whether or not they're false. Now we're going to talk about another important thing that scientific theories and hypotheses must do. They must make predictions. Not just any prediction, like reading a horoscope. A prediction in science is more like a forecast of what might happen based on possible patterns, research, or current observations. Like when the weatherman predicts that there might be rain based on observations of weather patterns. Before we get into the scientific predictions and theories, we have to know how to generate a testable hypothesis. There's a simple pattern to do this in experiments. First, you have to ask a question to define a problem. Let's start simple. Notice that you have to ask a question that is testable. So we leave questions like, for the magic eight ball. It is also important that your questions can be tested with a specific variable that you're manipulating. That is, any item, factor, or condition that can be controlled or changed. So the, in the plant experiment, there are two types of variables. The independent or manipulated variable is the variable that is changed in an experiment. In this case, the amount of water added to your test plants. And normally, there's only one independent variable to avoid confusion about what effect it has on the dependent variable. Like, you wouldn't put your plants in different locations with different amounts of light because you won't be able to determine what caused the change, the amount of water or the amount of sunlight. Which brings us to the dependent variable. The dependent variable is watched by scientists to see what happens when you change the independent variable. Can you guess what the dependent variable is in the plant experiment? It's the plant growth we asked about in our original question. Can you predict what will happen to our plants if we give one plant less water than the other one? This is what good hypotheses often do. They make testable predictions. Let's generate one using variables in the plant experiment. They often fit a pattern. So if we give one plant less water than the other, can you make a prediction based on your prior knowledge? One plant will grow taller than the other. It's that simple. Now let's have some fun. A funny experiment in a fictional story from Terry Pratchett's Discworld. The Discworld is sort of like what Earth would be if science didn't work because everything was magic. So nothing really makes sense because everything works by nonsense. So in Discworld, there was a nonsensical hypothesis for what the world was made of, or its geology. Everyone believed that their world was a flat disk carried on the back of elephants perched on a giant space turtle. So the Discworld's astrozoologists went out to confirm this nonsensical hypothesis, and they were able to confirm that it was indeed a turtle, just like their hypothesis had predicted, but unfortunately they couldn't answer every question because there was a mishap for the Chelonauts. What is the sex of the turtle? Why does it matter? Discworld's theory for the origin of their planet may seem a bit far-fetched, but back in reality people have come up with some similarly far-fetched theories for the origin of the Earth and for life on Earth. In fact, Pratchett borrowed his idea of the elephants and the turtle from Hindu mythology. Behold, Kurma, the world turtle. If the world was perched on the back of a huge turtle, as the ancient myth proposed, what would an astronaut, or maybe chelonaut, expect to see when they explored it? Something like this? You see, explanations of what our world is made of are testable claims, so this particular myth is busted. Ancient peoples from different regions explained the world at first with myths and stories. The knowledge to refute these ancient myths about the formation of the Earth was hard to come by for people who hadn't invented space travel and couldn't traverse huge distances on foot. The Greeks supposed that the Earth was round 2,600 years before people sat glued to their TVs watching the Apollo moon landings. The first person recorded to have used physical observations to confirm this prediction was Aristotle about 2,300 years ago. Using just the power of his mind, he noticed that there were stars that you could see in Egypt that you couldn't see in the northern regions. And that could only be true if the Earth was curved. Also, he observed that the shadow of the Earth during a lunar eclipse was curved. If they had hypotheses back then, he could have generated one to predict the shape of the Earth. Can you? If the Earth is spherical, then the shadow of the Earth on the Moon during a lunar eclipse will be round. However, the knowledge of the ancient Greek scholars became less well known later on. Some ordinary people still believed that the Earth was flat right up until Columbus sailed halfway around the world without his ship falling off the sides of a flat Earth. 
Flat Earth beliefs died hard. It took hundreds of years before they became less popular than the theory of plate tectonics. Even in modern times, in first world nations, there are still people who believe the Earth is flat, despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. Now, the theory of plate tectonics accurately explains not just the shape of the Earth, but what the Earth is made of, right down to its inner core. Unfortunately, there are still people who deny all of this evidence in favor of some sort of disk world. This despite all of the predictions of the flat Earth being completely falsified. Other myths about our planet continue to be popular despite making no confirmed predictions. Uh, they also fail to explain the evidence and observations of past and current scientists about our planet. One of the most popular myths still believed by millions is that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old. What prediction could you make with the model that the Earth is less than 10,000 years old? What would a 10,000-year-old Earth look like? Let's look at the Earth. Would a flat Earth or a young Earth have mountains like the Himalayas that we can measure the growth of yearly? These mountains are getting a mere one centimeter taller every year. And that's a growth rate of about 10 kilometers per million years, and that's relatively rapid for geologic time. However, the Himalaya's tallest mountain, Mount Everest, has taken 50 million years to grow 9 kilometers high. As the continental plate of India pushes against Asia, the landmass is also being stretched as it is being lifted, and this is one reason why the mountains aren't any taller. The Himalayas are the youngest mountain range in our planet, and they're 50 million years old. What we see in Earth's land formations cannot be squished into an Earth that is less than 10,000 years old. What we would see instead of the Himalayas is an Earth that wasn't even fully formed. Mythological predictions about the natural world often fail so spectacularly because ancient people simply lack the knowledge we have today and the tools to test their predictions, like the rocket-powered spaceship that got us this picture. Notice that there is a definite lack of turtles in this picture from an Apollo mission taken in 1968. It is also quite conspicuously not flat. Science and the scientific community marches on, and old ideas that lack the ability to predict the natural world are relegated to the dustbin of history. And perhaps the most powerful thing about making accurate predictions and the scientific method is that a good scientist can just take a peek at the Earth in the present and reconstruct what the Earth looked like before the Indo-Australian plate crashed into the Eurasian plate, forming the Himalayan mountains. A good prediction is also a window into the future. We can take what we understand about plate tectonics and predict what the Earth will look like millions of years from now. It looks like there's no turtles supporting the Earth in our future, either. Will where you live be underwater? Will your country have new neighbors? Science is the best shot we have at answering these and other important questions about our changing planet. The secret laws of the universe can be known, and once they are known, they can be predicted backwards and forwards. This is a principle called uniformitarianism, or the assumption based on natural laws and processes of the present that these same laws and functions operated in the past the same way they do now, and that they will continue to function that way in the future. So there will never be any turtles supporting the Earth in the past or in the future, because where are they now? Where's the evidence of them now? And you can predict from the way plate tectonics work now that they work that way in the past. They continue at much the same rates in the present as they will in the future. It's the only thing that makes sense, and it's how we make sense of the world we live in.